Thanks for taking a moment here and joining me on this God Time video today. When it comes to prayer, we face a couple of dangers. We can make prayer just seem so difficult that only the super Christians can do it effectively and then the rest of us just struggle. And sometimes we end up telling stories about saints who spent hours on their knees praying and it really just ends up discouraging us because we're busy. I mean, we're tired. The kids are wearing us out. Our job is a hassle and life just seems like a burden. And so it's easy to get intimidated about prayer. Or we can go to the opposite extreme and make prayer just seem like texting a buddy to meet you for dinner in a movie. Now that has the advantage of making you want to pray, but you can end up with a superficial view of prayer. And I think we would do a whole lot better if we would think of prayer as a gift from God that enables us to stay connected with him and then grow deeper in our knowledge of him. We're going to be in James chapter 5 this week, looking at verses 13 through 18, and it has a lot to say about prayer. And I want us today to look at just verse 16 in James chapter 5. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Now, we don't think about this verse very often because we don't know what to do with it. Uh, on one level, it's really difficult to understand. In, in this verse, though, James gives us a three-part pattern to follow. First, we confess to one another, then we pray for one another, and then we're healed. But it, it's hard to understand why we have to confess to each other. Why does this matter? Well, sin ends up isolating us. Confession brings us together. Sin destroys unity, and confession repairs that. Sin makes us sick. Confession leads to healing. However, when we talk about confession, that feels intrusive. It feels embarrassing. And so our pride keeps us from admitting the truth. Confession clears the way for prayer to happen. So James pictures the church as this community of believers where we're close enough to be honest and open enough to be real. And when that happens, true healing can take place. Now, you don't have to confess to everyone, but you do need someone. Maybe, maybe you've heard the phrase, you're only as sick as your secrets. And we want to get those secrets out so that we can be well again. The cure to those secrets that pile up is found in verse 16. Confession, prayer, and then the healing can come. Thanks again for joining me here today. God bless you.